Okay, so today we're continuing speaking about energy harvesting in piezoelectric materials. And we began a discussion where we had a piezoelectric material. For argument's sake, we'll consider it a block. And we press down on it. And I mentioned um, the rate at which you press down on it generates different current. And when we connect this piezo to an external circuit, which is obviously what we need to do in order to collect that charge and energy, uh, this is plus and this is minus, uh, when we connect it to external resistor, we know that the power, and this is just the resistor uh, representing a um, sort of a Let's say you know this is a harvesting circuit. So this is a, this is a harvesting circuit. So we know that the power which we can accumulate here is going to be I squared R. And in reality, this is going to have some type of uh, frequency dependence. It's going to be much more complicated. But initially. It's easier to understand and start to derive equations for a simple situation. So we're going to assume that uh, this battery charger or energy harvester can be modeled as a simple resistor. And we're going to use that to understand how much power we can extract from it. So the, we're going to assume that the power dissipated in the resistor is actually that power which is going into uh, you know, charging a battery, for example, or running in a, another external device. So we're going to go over the the simplest uh, example I can think of. So here it is. So I mentioned that we have this force on the piezo, and I'm going to assume that, and we also we're all going to have this resistor. So the resistor's values are, and the force which I'm going to put, uh, which I'll actually call a stress, times A, which is the area, which equals the force. So the profile of this is going to look like this. Okay, so we got time here, and we have force on this axis. I'm going to say that this force before time zero is zero and immediately it is at its maximum and you see if, if you actually do this if you actually uh, put a force instantly you're going to get um, basically if this this other one is a vibration you would get the vibration going up and then it starts ringing or something like this so we're not going to be considering that in this lecture so we're going to assume that this step up time so I'll say the time uh, basically to start this force uh, is going to be let's say much larger than 1 over the resonance frequency okay but it's also going to be much less than tau, the time constant of this uh, system. Therefore, when we press down on this, we're going to get displacement according to the elastic compliance under constant electric displacement because the charge effectively will not be able to travel immediately. So let's go into now more what's going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to do calculations regarding mechanical energy. We can save that for the end. But what we're going to begin doing is we have to start developing our equations for charge. So first we understand we apply force or we apply stress. How much charge is developed? Well that is obviously according to the uh, P is electric stress coefficient. So we provide a force times the P is electric stress coefficient equals charge, which we're just going to call Q for this sake. And this is sort of a, a check uh, for the units. So newtons times picocoulombs per newton. 
You just cancel, you get Coulomb, so you sort of know that this is correct. This is one uh, very easy way to sort of cross-verify that the piezo equation with all these certain constants and whatnot are going to turn out correct into the correct unit, the equation is correct. So we get this amount of charge here. Now, what? So we have this Q charge, and we have other other parameters. So we have the capacitance of the piezoelectric. And what the capacitance depends on geometry. And we have the resistance. The RC time constant for the system is RC, which is going to be tau, which is, and the voltage drop, the voltage being reduced, because equivalently what we have here, we have a piezo, which is a capacitor. So we have our piezoelectric material, essentially what we have is a capacitor, and we have our resistor here. So the charge is here I'm going to want to flow to the other side and this goes according to the RC time constant something we are already familiar with so let's do let's do those equations so, um, the voltage in the system in a discharging capacitor I guess this would not be this would be uh, time dependent is going to equal V uh, not uh, multiplied by E minus T over tau and essentially what this looks like we want to draw this on voltage O and then T in time is that it's going to look like this and at one tau I believe this drop is, is going to drop 68% drop or something like that. I think it's 68 point something or 67 point something percent drop. This is what, how you can also find tau uh, experimentally. So this is going to be the drop in voltage. Uh, you can also consider that the same thing, you know, since voltage and current in this case are uh, related. You can also consider this to be uh, the current, the, the charge over time. If you take the derivative here of the charge, so do dt of both sides, get a little different color here, dt both sides, we're going to get current. The current over time is going to be equal to, you take the derivative of this, obviously, you know that. Um, we're going to have negative tau, so we're going to have QO, negative tau, well negative doesn't mean anything for us right now because we're just calculating, uh, a, um, we want to calculate power so it's not going to matter if it's negative or positive, so, but we're going to have a tau on the bottom, E minus T over tau. Okay, so this is the important relationship we have here. And plus minus, we can take the absolute value and make it plus. It's not going to matter here. Uh, we know that the power is equal to the current squared times r. Okay, so we have a uh, equation for uh, the current, which was q not divided by tau times e to the minus t over tau times r which is going to remain the same now what I, what we want to understand is how many joules of energy can we use to store in the battery how many joules of energy are we able to use or get out of this Therefore, we can understand. We can quickly understand that this is not. This is called energy is going to be called U. U, let's say, has units of joules, and P has units of watts, which is joules per second. Uh, okay, so what P actually is 
is du change in energy dt or change in time basically an energy rate joules per second and this then if we um, take the integral of this with dt and we also take then the integral of this side let's draw in red color and we're going to take all the constants out so we have q o tau r integral from zero to infinity <laughs> okay i love doing that e to the minus t over tau so five dollars for the person who can get this mm, maybe not okay so this is dt so so this is actually going to be q I'll write all this over again and the limits of this will be zero to infinity and this my friend is going to be tau okay e minus t over tau minus um, so this is the current and this is the decay of, of uh, yeah the, so the decay of current over this resistor is going to produce something so oh, oh, I forgot all of this is supposed to be squared um, that's gonna lead to something else so let's just go ahead and square that sorry for wasting a little bit of time but I'm sure we can do it any quickly so okay so power equals i squared r du dt integral 0 to infinity dt equals um and we're sort of going to skip skip so this all this stuff here is going to be squared so we're going to have q not over tau squared multiplied by r multiplied by the integral of 0 to infinity e minus 2t because we had we had the squared term so that, that ends up being 2t uh, divided by ba 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 tau and dt so this ends up being this power this the, the total energy stored so we're just going to call that u naught equals again q o tau squared times r multiplied by what we'll have here um tau over 2t uh, for this case it's going to be minus but minus energy is is not really going to happen here so okay let's continue so this minus and plus you know we, okay let's keep going so minus 2t e to the minus 2 t over tau zero to infinity when this is zero so we're going to have uh, when infinity is evaluated in here it's going to be zero and when zero is evaluated in here it's going to be minus a minus and that is tau right that's tau it's going to be minus a minus tau 
So there's an identity for this and you probably have to use some type of limits. Essentially, uh, what this ends up being through Wikipedia, um, forgot my, uh, I guess it would be freshman level calculus, uh, but this would end up being, it would be tau divided by 2. So tau divided by 2. So essentially the, the power, which we'll now write in yellow, is equal to q squared and this tau divided by 2, q squared divided by tau squared times r, which is then going to be u o equals q squared. Uh, now that one tau cancels, so it's going to be tau r. And then finally, we're going to have uh, a 2 on the bottom, right? Uh, because of this 2 ends up on the bottom because the identity makes uh, this whole equation become tau over 2 and so we can actually notice that tau and r have are related tau is rc so finally we get to the point so u all right like that equals q squared uh, and Q squared, we already know, Q is equal to the force times the piezoelectric D coefficient divided by C, the capacitance, uh, that R, remember that R disappeared, R, C cancels, divided by the capacitance, um, and uh, divided by 2. So this is the energy which a piezoelectric material uh, can dissipate over external resistor. Notice it doesn't even depend on the resistor actually. It depends on the, um, the piezoelectric material here. It depends on its, its uh, capacitance, uh, its piezoelectric um, charge coefficient, and the force uh, applied. Uh, again, so very interesting that it's independent, independent of the resistor for this case here, for the special case where we apply a force uh, which is not going to have any a ringing and, and it's only going to be a single force. Um, you know, as we increase the resistor, uh, the current is going to be less. And if we decrease the resistor, the current is going to be more. Uh, but these terms are interrelated. The resist so these terms are interrelated also with the capacitance here. But when this is for a single pulse, like we, we, we push it on on it and then the charge decays. But when we're going to have more charges based on the frequency, and the frequency of, of, of how we are interacting, we, we want our current to dissipate at a certain rate based on the frequency which we're going to be applying. Uh, that's going to be discussed in the next chat and in the next part. Um, also, depending on this external resistor, which is not going to be a real external resistor, which is frequency independent, it's going to have some frequency dependence, but, and it'll also couple with the dynamics of the frequency of force being applied to the piezoelectric material. So for this simple case, we have an independent of, of our solution. Um, however, you're, when you're charging a battery, the battery charges at like 5 volts. Um, you're going to have some type of circuit in between. This. There's, there's going to be some practical problems with realizing this, but you know the charge dissipated. You know the charge, the work being done. Uh, when a resist, when you know, if if you think about this logically, that the you know the work being done when a when the charge goes from one side to the other, uh, that energy is going to be independent of that resistor. Anyways. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll continue where we left off in the next chapter.